Good morning, friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and a happy Sabbath to all of you. I must confess today that I am not worthy to preach this sermon to you because I myself is seeking forgiveness from God, but I'm sure that God will cleanse me from all unrighteousness before I could take his holy word on my lips. And therefore, I present before God myself that he will use me today in presenting the word. Today, the world is suffering from COVID-19. There are so many who are not able to fellowship with believers. We are separated by the circumstances. So from Sabbath to Sabbath, we want to be connected with you all through online messages. While all the businesses are closed, my dear friends, heaven is still open for business. And Jesus is the Lord of all. Today's message is entitled, God is still in control. I must give credit to Pastor John Lomakang through from his sermon, I have adapted this little message for you today, this Sabbath morning. Before we open the word of God and learn from it, may we pray and seek the guidance from the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we beseech you that you be present among us while we are separated from each other, but we know, Lord, that we are united in thee, that you are present among each one of us. Father in heaven, as we confess our sins, that you will forgive us our sins. Help us to learn in the times that we are living in and prepare ourselves. We pray in Jesus' name. Crisis is what moved the church from being gathered to scattered. <clears throat> it happened in the beginning of the church and it seems to be happening again in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic. As we pray for healing, my friends, we must also try to understand what God is saying in all this and what God wants us believers in Christ and leaders of the church both now and in the future what God wants us to know and do now and in the future the model for the rapid change through crisis is found in Acts chapter 1 to 8 in Acts chapter 1 verse 7 Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to come upon the believers and then they will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the world. However, they stayed in Jerusalem from chapter 2 when they received the Holy Spirit till chapter 7 when Stephen was stoned. It was only in chapter 8 verse 1, verse 1 when full persecution started, that the church was scattered in Judea and Samaria and ultimately to the utmost part of the world. Even after having received the Holy Spirit, the disciple continued, the believers continued to stay in Jerusalem. And so God had to do something different. Only after when Stephen was stoned, persecution started that the believers started going outside of Jerusalem to spread the gospel. We believe that God didn't want the early church to be persecuted, but rather God wanted to further his work. Could it be that COVID-19 is pushing the church to rapidly finish the mission? God never wastes a crisis. Instead, God offers us to partner with him in the leading change. For the first time in the human history, the world has taken a collective breath in anticipation of what is coming. First time, everyone is wondering what is coming ahead. People are wondering how to make sense of this, what is going on. Every channel that we turn, there is a bad news. There is bad news and bad news and bad news. My heart sinks when I keep seeing those news channels. Bible makes it very clear, my friends, as to where 
we are going in second timothy chapter 3 verse 1 paul says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come think about it dear friends brothers and sisters in the last days perilous times will come when you see the rising death toll we have entered the perilous time every day thousands of people are dying it is a perilous time when you see the government trying to find solution for the uncontrollable crisis we have entered the perilous times when you see the basic necessities of life food water is disappearing from the stores we have entered the perilous times when countries that once were tourist destinations people went there to spend their holidays are closing their borders today we have entered the perilous times when we go deep into our minds it's hard to understand what's going on but in testimonies for the church's volume 9 verse for uh, page 43 Mrs Ellen G White said makes it very clear what time we are living in she says we are on the verge of the time of trouble and perplexities that are scarcely dreamt of are before us we never thought of such thing that are happening today we never even dreamt of this covid 19 i learned this term first time this covid 19 has spread in just two weeks from 57 countries to more than 150 countries around the world countries and states are closing their borders no vehicles on the road stores are empty no man to be seen anywhere businesses are closed offices are closed schools are closed malls are closed trains are closed flights are closed but there is good news my friend heaven is still open heaven is still open god is still on the throne churches are closed but god is still answering our prayer there is no crisis in heaven god is still sending his angels to our homes to protect us and his holy spirit into our lives heaven is busy while everything in this world may be closed heaven is busy very busy in this time of trouble first time the world has come to a standstill there is a fear perplexity anxiety that has descended upon humanity i am fearful do not know from where i can get this virus and then next will be death everyone is concerned and trying to do whatever they can in their reach and yet so many are dying regardless of caste creed color gender rich or poor big or small believer or unbeliever everyone is in the same basket everyone is fearful but as a student of the bible when we see the climate of the world we should not be surprised because god's word has revealed to us that these things will happen these times would come notice that what paul says in first thessalonian chapter 5 verses 1 to 3 and he says but concerning the times and the seasons brethren you have no need that i should write to you for you yourself know perfectly that the day of the lord so comes as a thief in the night for when they say peace and safety then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape people are wondering we are wondering how to escape where to go what to do everyone is perplexed is there any place in the world that i can go where this crisis is not there where i can escape to but there is no place to escape the only place we can escape is under the power of the almighty god that's the place that's the safest place and my dear friend i suggest to you and myself let's go to that mighty power of god 
Psalms 91 verse 4 says, Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy field and buckler. Friends, since we cannot find any place on the planet to escape, let's escape to the presence of God through prayer, through the study of his word. Let's find him and be safe. Let us look away from the bad news to the good news of the gospel and know that God has, has, uh, has not lost control yet. He is still on the throne. This is the time to walk with Christ. Examine our hearts because we are on the border and worst, worst is yet to come. This is not the end. We are on the border, my dear friends, and the worst is yet to come. But after the worst, the best will be there for eternity. What are we seeing in just, what we are seeing is just the taste of what is to come. It is just the beginning. These are the beginning of sorrows, as the scripture says. Governments, leaders, both religious and secular, are trying to find an answer to this virus. But so far, only answer is found in Christ. Christ is the only answer. The only place that we can find safety is putting our lives in the hands of our Lord, who never lost any case. The master physician is our only hope. There is no hope in the hospitals. When there is no hope anywhere else, the master physician is our hope. While the doctor treats, the healing comes from God. Luke 21, 26 says, Men's hearts are failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. The power of heaven will be shaken. People are wondering what is coming next. What is coming next? I was just wondering whether the next incident will be Jesus appearing on the clouds. It can be. He may be on his way. What should we do? People are wondering. Whom to turn to? How can we find answer? When the organizations such as WHO themselves are searching for the answers in this crisis. Who can answer this question? God is allowing these moments to come to us to let us know that we cannot turn to anyone and anywhere. We can turn only to God. There is no other place that we can turn to or person that we can turn to. People are in a panic mode, stocking food and supplies. Politicians, the rich and the poor are alike facing the same thing. Nobody is high, nobody is low. COVID-19 is no respecter of persons. The question, of course, is what is next? What is coming next? But friends, when we are wondering, God knows what's coming next. He's not unaware what's going on. In Matthew 24, chapter, uh, chapter 24, verses 32 to 33, describe what God knows. He says, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that the summer is near. Verse 33, so you also, when you see all these things happening, know that it is near at the door, almost at the door. My dear friends, these are the signs that show that the coming of the Lord is very near. We have to go by faith. One day, all these difficulties, all these pains, all this suffering and death will not be even a memory. They will all pass away. The signs are telling us that the worst is ahead. Things are not getting better. They are becoming worst. The worst is still ahead of us. If ever there was a time to trust the Lord, it is now. Put your life in the hand of the Lord and in the hand of the one who can deliver you through the crisis. He is the only hope that can deliver us from this crisis. 
God delivered Daniel. God delivered the Hebrews. God saved Elijah in the time of famine. And God provided food for Israel during the famine in Egypt. Friends, God can provide us even today. For the student of the Bible, all of us believers, these are not the things that surprise us. One who is reading his Bible knows the signs of the time. He knows in which time he is living. Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 4 to 6 says, But you brethren are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. We are not ignorant. We know what is coming on. You are all sons of light and the sons of day. We are not of the night, not of darkness. Therefore, my dear friends, verse 6 says, Let us not sleep as others do. Let us watch and be sober. Be serious what's going to come, what's happening. In 1 Peter chapter 8, uh, chapter 5, verse 8, God says, Be sober, be serious. Don't just take it lightly. Be vigilant. Be alert. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. This disease may pass. Today, tomorrow, day after, the disease may pass. But the worst is yet ahead of us. In this pandemic, we do not know whether we will survive or not. Whether I will live or not. But when we put our life in the hands of the Lord, there is no need to be worried. There is no need to be despair. Graves may be filled, my dear friend, but there will be resurrection morning. Number is going up, but anyone who dies in the Lord, he will live. Graves are getting filled up. The numbers of those who are perishing, who are dying is going up. But if we die in the Lord, it is a blessed thing. We will see a resurrection morning and we will see the Lord. He who dies in the Lord, he will live. But while it is yet time, my dear friends, while we are still alive, let's do something good for others. Build relationship, share the gospel, bring hope to the hopeless, pray with them, read the scriptures with them, bring hope to the hopeless dying world. In times like this, there are four things we, the people of God, should know. Four things. In times like this, we need a savior. In times like this, we need to do four things. We should know four things. Number one, the signs around us is a call to readiness. Number one is a call to readiness. We need to get ready ahead of time. Be ready. That's what God wants us to do now while we are still alive. Luke 12, 39 to 40 says, And know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, my dear friends, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. We cannot wait for the world to get worse before we get better. We got to get better before the world gets worse. We got to be ready because the reality is that we do not know when Jesus is coming. But he did say when all these things begin to happen, it is time to be ready. Therefore, my dear friends, tighten our belts. Get your life in order. Confess your sins and be ready. That's what God wants us believers and leaders to do. A call for readiness. Number two, the condition of the world is a call to change. Change. Think about change. What is in your life that need to change? What can change? What habits can you 
lay down what addiction can you give to the lord if ever there was a time to change this is the hour to change i cannot keep on going as i was going on why change why should i change we cannot do same things and expect different results that's why i need to change we cannot live for the world and expect to be in heaven that's why i need to change we cannot live in darkness and expect light to show up that's why we need to change you got to change things things have to change the time has come we must change say lord show me what i need to change why should we change let's take a lesson from the pages of history as matthew the converted tax collector tells us what kind of hour we are living in matthew chapter 24 verses 38 to 39 for as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriages until the day that noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away also will the coming of the son of man be that's why we need to change if we are engaged in doing those things which they were doing before the flood we need to change because god is coming in the clouds today my dear friends the furnace is heating up seven times hotter than it was before there are more lions in the den then they were there during the time of daniel and therefore my dear friends don't enter the den of lions until you know the christ don't enter the fiery furnace until you are committed to stand with christ in the fiery furnace first peter a second peter chapter 3 verse 9 says the lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness but is long suffering he is waiting for us to change he is long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance maybe it's me that he is waiting for for a change he is waiting when i will change therefore these two things number 1 call for readiness we must be ready the time is at hand and number 2 we must change number 3 my dear friend this is the hour when god's people ought to be awake it's not the time to sleep we need to know what's happening the alarm is saying wake up wake up my dear friends wake up everybody this is the time to be awake don't sleep and slumber beyond this solemn hour don't keep on sleeping you may miss the train romans chapter 13 11 to 14 says and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of our sleep for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed the night is far spent the day is at hand Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk properly honestly as in the day and not in rivalry and drunkenness not in lewdness and lust and not in strife and envy but put on the lord jesus christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust take off the past and get ready for the future take off throw it off and get ready for the future take off the world and get ready for jesus is coming there will be trials but it is better to be in the boat in the storm with jesus than to be outside the boat without jesus it is better to face the valley of the shadow of death with christ than to try to face the valley of the shadow of death without him isaiah 55 verses 6 to 7 says seek the lord 
वाइल ही मे बी फाउंड कॉल अपॉन हेम वाइल ही इज नियर लेट द विकेट फॉर सेक हिज वेज एंड द अनराइचस मैन हिज थॉट्स लेट हिम रिटर्न टू द लॉर्ड एंड ही विल हैव मर्सी ऑन हेम and to our lord and for he will abundantly pardon us number 1 it's a call for readiness it's a call for readiness be ready it's a call for change number 2 we can't be just as we are we need to change and number 3 wake up it's not the time to sleep the train may go and you will still be sleeping i may still be sleeping number 4 my dear friends what the believers and the leaders must know must do this is the time that god's people must hold up the light we can't keep the light under the bushel the light cannot be hidden anymore people should know who jesus is people should know who are the chosen remnant people of god don't hide your light otherwise how will they know christ let your light so shine that through your light people will know christ it is the time that we must hold up the light in this hour of darkness it is the time to hold up the light when there is darkness around it's you who can light up brighten the corner where you are let your light so shine that's what jesus said don't dim it don't let it go off let it shine brighter and brighter by how by the study of your word or study of the word of god by the life of prayer by the presence of lord jesus christ in our life as i at 60 verses 1 and 2 says arise shine for your light has come arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people don't you think that's what is happening today darkness has covered the earth and the people but the lord will rise over you the lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you God is looking up to each one of us to remove the darkness of ignorance of disbelief from this world. People are running to and fro and do not know where to go. It's you, it's I who need to show them the way. We must hold up the light. The world is world is getting darker and darker. The children of God must shine brighter and brighter. What is the benefit of shining brighter? John says in first John verse seven. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have the fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sins. How do we shine? How do we do that? There are three ways to shine. Hold up the truth. of word god's word lot of things people are saying lot of false prophets are coming around you turn your cell phone your television your youtube all kinds of prophets are there therefore my dear friend number 1 how do you shine hold up the truth of god's word tell them what god says number 2 walk in the truth of god's word walk according to god's word walk according to his instruction what in the path that he has shown us number 3 share the jesus to the world share jesus to world everybody must know who jesus is that's what this is the time when people are looking for savior jesus is the only savior that they need therefore oh lord oh, help us that we change we do not just slumber if we do our part if we do our part what god has told us to do a better pandemic will cover the whole earth not covid 19 a better 
pandemic something that will cover the whole world and that pandemic is recorded in habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14 what that pandemic will be we are waiting for that pandemic not covid 19 not something that kills you but something that gives us eternal life for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the lord that is the pandemic we are waiting for and that cannot happen unless you and i do our part for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the lord as the waters covers the sea so my dear friends where is that glory going to be seen where it's in you and me in your life and in my life it will be seen in your prayer life when you and i go on our knees in trusting god in this time of crisis in your trusting life people will see people should see why advent is the remnant church is not worried why they are not perplexed why they are not running to and fro although we take precautions it's required it's needed we must do it but we have a hope we have hope in something better that is coming though i die yet i will live though i die yet i will live so where the world will see this glory it will see in your prayer life in your trusting life how you spend your time praying soon this pandemic will pass soon it will pass it's not going to be there forever and soon jesus will come and the question before you and me my dear friends is what's next are we ready are we ready for his coming or are we just struggling trying how to be safe from this pandemic the bigger part is that get ready for that pandemic which habakkuk talks about when the glory of the lord will be filled on this earth just like the waters of the sea may god help us as we continue to go through this hard times that we have the assurance that i am with you i will not leave you even till the end of the world god has promised and he is not slack as some people think slackness is about keeping his promise he will keep his promise and he will keep that promise with you that he will carry us through no matter what happens we will see christ coming on the clouds of heaven per chance if we die due to this pandemic that's going on the next morning we will see the trumpet sound and christ descending on the clouds of heaven may god bless you as you continue to keep your faith and hope in jesus christ god bless you all